Having computed that angle for the big triangle, it's the same angle I need for the small triangle. The speed of the robber gives me the length of the hypotenuse, as math people say. And with that length and the angle I've already determined, I can figure out the lengths of the other two sides of the smaller triangle. Again, though, there's all kinds of ways I could have made a mistake here. I could have gotten the use of sine and cosine backwards, or divided where I should have multiplied. So once again, I output the intermediate results, stop here, and check my work. In this case, I'm looking for a much larger value along the y-axis. Also, since my robber's overall speed is 11, both numbers should be below that. Once these results check out, I can move on. The lengths I've just computed tell me how much to alter the position of the robber in each direction. At this point, though, it occurs to me that with the values I've chosen, the robber's x position should increase while the y position should decrease. Of course, that would be easy enough to code, but I want a solution, even at this stage, that's going to work even if I change the signs of the initial robber position values. So I use a function I haven't thought about in a while, copy sign. This function takes two arguments and sets the sign of the first argument to match the sign of the second argument. In this case, I want the sign of the change amounts to be the opposite of the signs the position values began with. Because the door is in position 0, 0, I want the position numbers to always work towards zero. And as before, I put in some output to test the results. Having written this, I thought to myself, well, what if I put the guard back in this little test program? That is, I set an initial position for the guard and have the guard take one step towards the robber. Here's the code I added. It's pretty much the same code as for the robber, so let me just point out where it's different. Of course, I've got some different values here for the initial position and speed of the guard. But here's the first real change. The corners of what I call the big triangle are specified here by the locations of the guard and the robber. Therefore, to get the width and the height, I have to subtract the positions along each axis. This indirectly leads to the other significant change. With the robber, I determined the sign of the change amount based on the sign of the matching coordinate. When I got to this point with the guard, though, I realized that only worked because the robber was heading for the coordinate system origin, 0, 0. Instead, what I really need to do is use the sign of the height or width of the big triangle. In this way, the sign of the change will make the guard position move towards the robber's position as we need. As before, I need to check the output along the way to make sure everything is working as intended. There's lots of places where I could have done things backwards. So I checked this out with multiple sets of data and didn't consider this phase of problem solving complete until all the answers checked out. At this point, I realized I'm pretty close to a total solution. I set this code aside and started on a new program. I'm going to take you through the creation of this program in the order that I wrote it. I started by taking the second half of the first program, the code that updates the position of the guard, and made a general function for the new program. Here it is. You can see I send in the position and speed of the thing that is moving and the position of the target. Inside, it's pretty much the same code, just using these more generic parameter names. So I'm thinking I just need to repeatedly call this to move the robber towards the door and the guard towards the robber. But how do I know when to stop? Well, either the robber is going to escape, which means he gets to the door, or the guard is going to capture the robber. But I realize it's probably never going to be the case that the robber is positioned exactly on 0, 0, or the guard position exactly matches that of the robber. 
what I need to do is compute the distance between these positions. And if that distance is small enough, I'll just say they're pretty much in the same place. So I write this distance function. In this case, I remembered exactly how the distance function works for Cartesian coordinates. Otherwise, this could be a problem solving task in and of itself. I create variables for the position of the door, more for readability than anything else. And I created a variable that dictated how close two objects had to be to be considered at the same place. This value I initially chose seemed reasonable enough, but then I realized that I'm moving the guard and robber in much larger increments than this. In other words, the robber was going to shoot right past the door if he's moving 11 feet every time and would probably never get close enough for the program to stop. And likewise, the guard was going to keep shooting past the robber too. So then I wrote this speed normalization function. You see, it's only the ratio of the two speeds that is important, not the actual speeds. It's like I'm running the simulation in slow motion. So my normalization function is going to keep the ratios of the two speeds exactly the same while setting the higher speed to be whatever value is specified by this third argument. Now I can be confident of convergence. You'll note that after the loops, I explicitly check for both possible endings. It's mathematically possible that in some situations, the guard will reach the robber exactly when the robber reaches the door. Does the robber escape? I think that's a philosophical question beyond the scope of my meager program. I know I've gone through this quickly, so depending on where you are in your study of programming, you might need to go through this a couple of times to follow exactly what I'm doing in the code. The important thing to me, though, is not the solution, but the steps that I took to find it. I've explained this program in less time than I took to write it, but it wasn't really that difficult of a program to write, even though it is a difficult problem, because I was taking a series of small steps. At each point when I was writing code, I was only trying to figure out one thing. If you're only trying to figure out one thing and you're patient, you're going to find an answer sooner or later. That's the key to this technique of problem solving. You can find programs from programming contests all over the web, and I do encourage you to try some. Of course, in a programming contest, you're often under some sort of time constraint, but that's not the important thing from my point of view. The important thing is that you stretch those mental muscles that are used in problem solving. I hope this helps you out. Please do like the video or subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Feel free to go to my website to get in touch with me if you'd like to make suggestions on future videos, or if you want to say hello or anything else, or just put your comments below. As always, thanks for watching.